Sati Sagomisha. Dam Nasvena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi. O my Lord, Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality of Godhead. Uh, from our respectful basis is unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he's independent because there's other, no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The, religion, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitra Votra Paramo Nirmatsarinam Satama Vidyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulana Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimba Pure Ishwarha. Sadyohridi Avurudyate Tra. Kriti Bihisusu Subhistakshana. Completely reject all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God-realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatoro galitam falam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pipata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahuraska bhuvibhavu kaha. O expert and thoughtful men, relish a Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although this nectarine juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidyantak Sto Badrani Vidunati Suhit Satam to hear about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, or Ve to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita, is itself righteous activity. 
And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. In the, uh, uh, okay, I'm sorry, Nasta Presu Badresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, and from the devotees. <clears throat> he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Tadarajas tamo bhavo Amaloba dayas chaye, chete etar and avidam, stitvam sattve prasidati. When these pure impurities are wiped away, the candidate becomes, uh, the, the candidate bec remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogitaha bhagavat tattva vijnana mukta sangasya jayate I jump, I, okay, by development of devotional service. One becomes fixed. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from modes of passion and ignorance. And thus his material loss and avarice are diminished. And his material loss and avarice are diminished. All right. When these impurities are wiped away, when these impurities are wiped away the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, pure becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis Siddhyante sarvasam saya Siddhyante chashikarmani Drista evat manishwari Thus bhakti yoga severs the hard lot of material affection and enables one to come to the stage with some sayam samagran. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam Canto 1, Chapter 15, Text Number 5. Arjuna Uvacha, Arjuna Uvacha, Panchito Ham Maharaja, Panchito Maharaja, Harina Bandurupina, Harina Bandurupina, Yena me Paritam Tejo, Yena me Paritam Tejo, Deva Vishmapanam Mahat, Deva Vishmapanam Mahat, Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Arjuna said, O okay, King, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, who treated me exactly like an intimate, intimate friend, has left me alone. Thus, my astounding power, which astonished even the demigods, is no longer with me. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. In the Bhagavad Gita 10.41, the Lord says, anyone specifically powerful and opulent in wealth, strength, beauty, knowledge, and all that is materially desirable is to be considered but a product of an insignificant portion of the complete whole of my energy. No one, therefore, 
can be independently powerful in any measure without being endowed by the Lord. When the Lord descends on the earth along with his eternal, ever-liberated associates, he not only displays the divine energy possessed by himself, but also empowers his associate devotees with the required energy to execute his mission of incarnation. It is also stated in the Bhagavad Gita 4.5 that the Lord and his eternal associates descend on the earth many times. But the Lord remembers all the different roles of incarnations, whereas the associates, by his supreme will, forget them. Similarly, the Lord takes away with him all his associates when, they, when he disappears from the earth. The power and energy which were bestowed upon Arjuna were required for fulfillment of the mission of the Lord. But when his mission was fulfilled, the emergency powers were withdrawn from Arjuna because the astounding powers of Arjuna, which were astonishing even to the denizens of heaven, were no longer required, and they were not meant for going back home, back to Godhead. If endowment of powers and withdrawal of powers by the Lord are possible even for a great devotee like Arjuna, or even the demigods in heaven, then what to speak of the ordinary living beings who are but figs compared to such great souls? The lesson is, therefore, that no one should be puffed up for his powers borrowed from the Lord. The sane man should rather feel obliged to the Lord for such benef benefactions and must utilize such power for the service of the Lord. Such power can be withdrawn at any time by the Lord, so the best use of such power and opulence is to engage them in the service of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada, Patita Pavan, and Kije. So, this is a very potent statement by Srila Prabhupada. And uh, he's simply uh, explaining the fact that everything originally comes from Krishna, he's the source of everything. Janmadasayata. So, whenever a person demonstrates extraordinary powers, that is something bestowed by the Lord. And in order to protect that person who has extraordinary powers, when they're not needed, he takes them away. Otherwise, one would get so puffed up that they would begin to think that they are the Lord. And this has happened so many times in history. There are great so-called emperors, kings, and military men uh, develop a lot of powers like Alexander the Great but when uh, uh, he oversteps his uh, let's say destiny he's defeated and therefore he was defeated in India and he was bruised seriously in Persia and then also he encountered a lot of difficulty in Bactia, which is like uh, Uzbekistan and Afghanistan. And uh, eventually, uh, when he gets to India, he's exhausted, and uh, he, he's basically defeated. And then he retreats. He can't go back the way he came because uh, his men were exhausted. He was exhausted, and they were disheartened also by their defeat in India. So he goes another way and dies of syphilis uh, in somewhere in, in, in Pakistan, modern Pakistan or, or uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. So, so we see that Krishna can give powers and he can withdraw them at any time. Therefore, whatever powers we have, now we're not in the level of Alexander the Great or other such uh, very uh, charismatic people, but whatever powers we have, and everyone has some powers that are bestowed by the Lord, we should only use them for the service of the Lord because at any time he can take them away. That, that includes money, that includes uh, prestige, that includes intelligence, whatever it is. We should only use these things in the service of the Lord 
because for the short time that we possess them, if we can become puffed up by them, then uh, we will uh, be extremely frustrated when they're taken away from us. Just like in the case of Arjuna, he had such amazing powers, but when Krishna disappeared, Krishna withdrew all those powers from him. And he was not even able to protect the wives of Krishna that he was escorting back to Hastinapur. And uh, he, you know, he's very frustrated. <coughs> so it says, if endowment of powers and withdrawal of powers by the Lord are possible even for a great devotee like Arjuna, or even the demigods in heaven, then what to speak of the ordinary living beings who are but figs compared to such great souls? The lesson is, therefore, that no one should be puffed up for his powers borrowed from the Lord. The sane man should rather feel obliged to the Lord for such benefactions and must utilize such power for the service of the Lord. Such power can be withdrawn at any time by the Lord. So the best use of such power and opulence is to engage them in the service of the Lord. Now, our tendency is to get puffed up by even a little bit of power. In fact, if you want to know who someone is, give them power, and you'll find out exactly who they are. And most people come out to be uh, uh, to be proven rascals by the misuse of the little bit of power that they get. So, therefore, the first principle of education is amanitvam, humility. One must be humbled before God. In fact, the main message of the Bhagavad Gita is to teach people that we're all subordinate to the Lord, that no one <coughs> is able to surpass the Lord. So this is explained in the 5th chapter, 17th verse, and the 15th chapter, 19th verse. Let's go to the 15th chapter, 19th verse first, because there is the most explicit statement. Where it says, in chapter, oh, sorry. Yeah, it says, It is not that one should simply speculate academically. One should submissively hear from Bhagavad Gita that these living entities are always subordinate to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Anyone who is able to understand this according to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, knows the purpose of the Vedas. No one else knows the purpose of the Vedas. So that's the whole point. And then in 5.17, also, the same point is clarified even more, where it says, when one's intelligence, mind, faith, and refuge are all fixed in the Supreme, then one becomes fully cleansed of misgivings through complete knowledge, and thus proceeds straight on the path of liberation. So in the purport, Prabhupada says, the supreme transcendental truth is Lord Krishna. The whole Bhagavad Gita centers around the declaration that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. That is the version of all Vedic literatures. So this is a very important point, and this is something unique about Prabhupada's Bhagavad, uh, Bhagavad Gita translation. He focuses the whole Krishna consciousness movement on the basis of aham sarva se prabhava, matak sarvam pravartate, iti matva bhajante man buddha bhava saman bitaha. That Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. There's no one equal to him or greater than him. Everyone is subordinate to him, including all the demigods, including even his plenary expansions, like the two chaturvyuhas in the spiritual world, the Narayana, and also the Vishnu incarnations in the material world and all the incarnations that emanate from Shri Vishnu. So uh, that 
statement, Aham Sarvasya Prabhava, he is the origin of everything material and spiritual, is very important. And also, Etad Yonini Bhutani Sarvani Tu Padaraya, he says, there's no truth superior to me. No, there's nothing superior to me. So these are the fundamental verses of Bhagavad Gita on which the whole philosophy of Krishna consciousness is based. So it says, the whole Bhagavad Gita centers around the declaration that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is the version of all Vedic literature. Paratattva means the Supreme Reality, who is understood by the knowers of the Supreme as Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Bhagavan, or the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is the last word in the Absolute. There is nothing more than that. The Lord says, Matak Parataram Nanyat, <clears throat> and also that's the uh, seventh chapter, seventh verse. And impersonal Brahman is also supported by Krishna. Brahmano hi Therefore, in all ways, Krishna is the supreme reality, one whose mind, intelligence, faith, and refuge are always in Krishna. Or in other words, one who is fully in Krishna consciousness is undoubtedly washed clean of all misgivings and is in perfect knowledge in everything concerning transcendence. Krishna consciousness, a Krishna consciousness, a Krishna conscious person can thoroughly understand that there is duality, simultaneous identity and individuality in Krishna. And equipped with such transcendental knowledge, one can make steady progress on the path of liberation. So this statement is sometimes confusing to people. Therefore, we'll give a little explanation of that and stop when he says that uh, <clears throat> that there is duality, simultaneous identity and individuality in Krishna. So what does that mean? That means that at any point, everything that you observe is going to be a chintya, beta, a beta, tattva or uh, simultaneously one and inconceivably different. Therefore, Krishna says, Mataks, uh, he says, Matak Paratanam Nanyat Kinshit Asti Dananjaya. He says, O conqueror of wealth, there's no truth superior to me. Everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. And then before that, Etat Yoni Nibhutani Sarvani Tu Padaraya Aham Krishna Shit Jagata. All created beings have their source in these two natures, that is, material and spiritual. Of all that is material and all that is spiritual in this world, know for certain that I am both the origin and the dissolution. So these are the fundamental verses in Bhagavad Gita that Prabhupada emphasized over and over again. And he says that this uh, a Krishna conscious person can thoroughly understand that there is duality, simultaneous identity and individuality. So we are all part and parcel of Krishna, but yet he is a unique individual and we are unique individuals, even though we are connected to him eternally. So this is a mystery to the Mayavadis and it makes sense to the devotees. Srila Prabhupada, Patita Bhavani Ki Jai. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Are there any questions? When, uh, when a living entity is uh, uh, invested with power from Krishna, in the Shakti Avish Avatar, but everyone has some power from Krishna. Yeah, I'm, I'm just one question. Yeah. So, um, now, if Krishna invests this power with someone, one the person becomes part of that because that comes from Krishna. Well, it's like this. Let's say you buy a gun. Hmm? Let's say you buy a gun. Okay. Now, would that influence your consciousness in some way or other? I think so. You see? That's the point. 
because the gun increases your power. And many people who have guns sometimes make mistakes and they get angry and they use it to kill someone and then they prosecute it for murder. Mm -hmm. right. And other people who have guns, sometimes an intruder or a criminal breaks into their house and they kill them and they're not prosecuted because they only use the gun for self-defense. And where somebody else gets puffed up and he uses the gun because they get angry, they kill somebody, like their wife or a, a relative or someone that you know they're dealing drugs with or whatever. So you, you see, that gun increased your power. But along with that increase in power, there's a responsibility to use it properly, otherwise you'd be prosecuted. Most people overstep that, that responsibility because they get puffed up. And, and what's interesting is when uh, Lord Rama was going to go into uh, uh, yeah, into uh, exile, he wanted to take his weapons with him. And his wife tried to convince him not to do it. She said, if you're going to take them with you, you will definitely use them. She, she made the best argument in the world for uh, <laughs> nonviolence, but he didn't accept. He didn't accept. But he, could, but he only used them when it was absolutely necessary for self-defense. He didn't use them. And the same with Arjuna. He took his weapons with him. He didn't, he didn't give them up when, he, when they went into exile and then went, went into incognito, right? But when the uh, Kauravas wanted to invade the kingdom of uh, Virata, Arjuna went and got his weapons where he was hiding them and defeated the Kauravas and stopped them. But it, it was right at the end of the year of incognito. So when they suddenly realized they were defeated, you know, only Arjuna could do that, the period had ended. So he did not break that vow. So you see how it's very easy to get puffed up when you have power. Because when you have power, you have a responsibility also. What is the responsibility? It should only be used in the service of Krishna. You can have power in the form of money, prestige, uh, important friends, you know, different ways, physical strength. Like, for example, a karate expert, if he gets in a fight and kills someone, they prosecute him because that knowledge of karate is a weapon. And if he gets angry, see, when you, when you take karate and these type of... Uh, uh, disciplines of self-defense or, uh, or karate is not self-defense, it's attack. Whereas there are other types of uh, s things that are only self-defense. When you overstep yourself, you get prosecuted. If you only use it in a surgical way to protect yourself, then you're not prosecuted. As policemen also, if they get angry, and shoot someone and kill them where it was not necessary to do it, they get prosecuted for murder. Same with soldiers. If they, you know, snap in, in the heat of battle and kill innocent people, they can be prosecuted for murder. So it should be used properly. Yes. And yeah, I read somewhere Prabhupada says that like the body, the body actually has all the power. They can never use it if you really for the sake of the Lord. Yeah. Give example of Hanuman and also here I think too. Yeah. The Hanuman, the very humble, the neighbor, the slave, the uh, the mighty, you know, the power. Only if you feel for the sake of the Lord. Yes. Exactly. That what Hanuman did is incredible. When he went to the Himalayas to get him sanctuary. No, when he, when he confronted Ravana directly. Yeah. So this is a very important purport. Yeah, it says that uh, the sane man should rather feel obliged to the Lord for such benedictions and must utilize such power for the service of the Lord. Such power can be withdrawn at any time 
by the Lord. So the best use of such power and opulence is to engage them in the service of the Lord. I think this is very, very important thing for ourselves. Yeah. Like yesterday, <laughs> different people came and they gave different donations. Well, one person that I've known for many, many years, and I know he has a lot of money, he gave a very, very small donation, you know, and he's got a lot of money. So, see, they don't realize what they're doing when they do things like that. You know, uh, he's, he's, going to, he's going to suffer for that, holding back like that. Right. Anyway, it's interesting. You know, it's, it, when, you, when you look through the prism of Bhagavatam, then you understand things <laughs> much more clearly, and you understand uh, what our responsibility is. Whatever powers we have, it can be money, it can be prestige, it can be friends, it can be physical strength, whatever. If we don't use it while we have it in Krishna's service, then uh, uh, we're going to regret it seriously. Because later on when we're approaching death, we'll say, my God, I should have used these things. You know, What good is it? You know, I'm going to leave it to my kids and they're a bunch of bums. They're going to spend it all. Or, uh, and uh, they're not, they're not going to give one penny to Krishna. Yeah, Hare Krishna, Lord Jesus, Lord Prabhupada, Kijay.